Don't waste time on me, baby, baby, baby. La da da. Don't waste time on me. The time chases me down. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Or if you're new, thank you for joining us here. Um, on this video about restoring a brooch. I really appreciate everybody coming back and watching my channel after I took such a long hiatus. I'll do a video over that, uh, what happened during that year later. But this one is all about breathing new life into this 1930s brooch I bought for a couple bucks. Let's show it. Here we go. And it was in pretty bad shape but I just love restoring the beauty to these pieces so I can preserve the history of it for generations to come. Before we dive in, let me introduce myself. My name is Casey and this is my daughter. Uh. <laughs> um, I am a historian, a stay at home mom, and I am insanely passionate about vintage jewelry. And I love the story and the history that each piece holds. And I've been studying restoration for years and the techniques of it. And I used to do a lot in porcelain, but now I mainly focus on jewelry. And I can't wait to share some of that knowledge and give you some tips on how to do it if you're interested. So whether you're a reseller, a collector, a jewelry lover, or you're just curious about the art of restoration, um, I hope that you enjoy the transformation of this brooch. And um, I'm going to be doing some more of those. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, let me know what you think in the comments. So here it is, and as you can see, it's kind of a sad piece. The enamel loss is pretty substantial. The rhinestones are yellowed, dead, or missing. And then we have the very lackluster uh, finish on the metal. Now this is a, a base metal, pot metal, white metal, whatever you want to call it. And it's a very, very soft metal. So you can't just really take dremels and stuff to this because you can just take chunks of this off very, very easy. It's that soft. So it's very hard to shine this up in um, just like the very traditional ways with like a bench lathe or dremels, polishing it like that. It has to a lot of hand work in this and we're going to be replacing the rhinestones repainting the enamel taking all the scratches off and resurfacing like refinishing the surface to make it shine again and i know it's very hard to find how to do that so maybe you guys can glean some of the information off of this because i know it took me a long time to figure out these techniques <laughs> So the first thing I do when I start the restoration is to uh, begin taking all the rhinestones out. There's no reason to keep any of these. If most of them were good, I could just replace a few. But since pretty much all of them are bad, I'm going to take them all out. I'm not even going to save the, uh, the good ones. I'm just going to take them all out because even the very few that I would have are not going to match um, the new old stock ones I'm going to be putting back in there at the end of this. And I do this with a, just a very sharp exacto blade and um, I don't dull this one down. I dull a lot of them down but not this one and I just push them into the side of the setting of the rhinestone at about a 45 degree angle and most of the time they just pop out. I don't have to use a whole lot of force. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you do, especially if they are put in there again. If they're originally in there, like with the original glue, it's pretty easy. But if somebody else has tried to redo these and has like some very odd super glue or uh, resin, epoxy, something like that, it can be a lot harder. And if it is very hard, you can soak this in some very, very hot water because you're getting rid of the rhinestones anyway and it's not going to hurt anything. So now it's time to take off the enamel since the rhinestones are out. So that would be the second part of this. Um, because you don't want to paint over the enamel. If you think about if you have nail polish on your fingernails, you would take that off before you repainted it. Same thing with this. And it might seem a little bit daunting to take the enamel off, but this is uh, definitely 
very easy. This is cold painted enamel, um, so it's not baked on, it's not heated at, or like fired on there. So it will literally just chip off. You can also use um, acetone to get this off. But if you don't have a steady hand, sometimes it could be uh, more difficult to use the X-Acto knife or a file or something like that. So maybe using acetone would be the best thing for you because the metal's so soft. If you do accidentally um, scratch it or do a deep puncture, it will be very hard to fix. While acetone, you're not gonna have that problem at all. And I just use a cheap acetone straight from Walmart. So it should be uh, fairly easy for you guys to find. It's just 100% uh, acetone nail polish remover and I think that costs like you know a dollar fifty probably more now I've had that for a long time but even if it doubled three bucks and you can see it just comes off and the acetone is not going to hurt the pot metal at all so I'm just rub 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 and you can get it off however this isn't my favorite way to do it uh, so I will use the exacto knife again I use the acetone a little bit more at the end to get the little tiny uh, little tiny enamel from the crevices so I'm not having to scratch it out because with the X-Acto knife or anything that's harder you will you will be able to scratch right through that pop metal and that's something you really just don't want to do. Okay so now that we have all of the enamel cleaned off here I am going to show you how the normal avenues of buffing and shining a piece are not really going to work. This is a silver cleaning pot cloth or you know like a sunshine cloth and it's going to kind of clean it a little bit but it's not going to do much to restore the luster or anything to pot metal. And I also have my little micro abrasion cloth that I just swear by for sterling and gold jewelry. But it's also not going to restore the luster or get the scratches out at all. So these two cloths are obviously very good tools, but they're just not going to work in a restoration like this. Now you can see that the cloths have... Uh, made it shine a little bit more but they have definitely not taken the scratches out and I am scrubbing with these things I mean very very hard I know you can't tell over the video but I am using a lot of elbow grease in this and I keep changing the light off and on to show you in different lights so you can see that um, even with like the very bright light I have and in the natural light that it's there's there's not like I'm not faking what this looks like. <laughs> so here's something else people use a lot when they are shining jewelry and I love it. It's semi-chrome and um, I use it to polish jewelry, to test for bake light, all kinds of things. But I'm just showing you this because uh, I know other people will want to use it, but it's still not a restorative uh, compound it's actually just going to shine and clean but it's not going to restore anything um, so I'm basically just showing you this to show you it's not going to restore it and also the results you can get from it in case it is what you want to use so I can shine this thing all day I can do it with the semi-chrome the cloths the micro abrasion I can just constantly sit here and scrub it until my little heart's content and it will eventually as you can see get it shiny but it's not going to restore it it's not going to get all those scratches out now some people do like those scratches and they want to leave them there for you know character and stuff and that's absolutely fine but that's not what this video is about it's about restoring it so i clean off uh, the oils and the semicrone and stuff with some acetone and I scrub it a little bit and I am going to start the resurfacing process. Okay so I have cleaned and shined and got all the rhinestones out and taken all the enamel off 
and shined it uh, to show you guys that it's not going to restore it. And now I am going to get my handy dandy X-Acto knife right back out and start the process of resurfacing it. Now what in the world am I doing? I am scraping off the like kind of top of the scratches so those scratches the metal that's moved around and has moved around through the years is kind of sticking up so I am barely just taking my exacto blades and I am just rubbing it off now why am I not using dremels uh, that's another great question because this is an extremely soft metal and when I mean like extremely soft you can take your nails pretty much and kind of dig into this so this is not a sterling or something that I can just take a Dremel and start shining it I need to be very precise with this now if I take a Dremel I could yes probably still not probably I could hundred percent still um, shine this up and probably make it look better but also I am going to probably make a orange peel effect on this metal because it is so soft and we would be using a very high speed and probably some pressure that's going to go on there and it's going to move that metal around and it's not going to allow for me to just be as light as I need to be. Now I know that is 100% possible but you're just asking to mess something up if you jump get scared uh, something happens your hand slips you could mess this piece up you know just in a heartbeat with a dremel so as I was recording this I wasn't paying too much attention so I am doing parts of this that don't really need to be resurfaced any place that the enamel will be going back on it doesn't need to be resurfaced because we're going to be painting back over that so I would flatten it out some but you will see me pay a little bit too much attention to some of those pieces so um, I guess just all in the name of uh, teaching and science here and for anyone who is uh, fairly new to this and is still like, I just don't understand why you don't just use these regular methods, think of it more like this. I would have a piece of tin foil and I could squish it. But if I put it on a smooth countertop and took like the back of a spoon or something and or even just my finger and moved over it and over it and over it with pressure, I could eventually smooth that back out. And that's basically what is happening here is we're basically refabricating, kind of remolding that metal instead of just buffing it. Because hard metals you can buff, but these soft metals, it's not going to allow you to do that. You will go right through it. And then I took a little bit of uh, 2,500 grit sandpaper, which is extremely fine, um, to get into some of the little places that I can't get with the X-Acto knife very well. So I do that and I'll show you how I shine that up afterwards as well. So once I'm done sanding and stuff, I go ahead, wipe off my piece, and then I start the uh, process of bringing the very mirror finish shine back to the piece. Now this is extremely important. The pieces or these tools that I have are just, uh, they're, they're for clay. And I, th I think I've shown these in other videos. You just buy them off Amazon and like a pack, you know, a five or six. But the very important thing here to note is that these, these are hard metal. This isn't, you know, soft metal. This is hard metal, stainless steel. And they have a mirror finish to them. So whatever finish you're rubbing against this metal, 
is the finish that this piece is going to take on. So if you have like a striated metal, then you're going to have striated marks on there. If you have a dull finished metal, that probably means there's lots of little fine scratches uh, or it's not completely smooth and it's going to take on that more dull appearance. So the mirror finish on my tools is actually rubbing against this and you want to lay it flat against it and you're just rubbing it kind of like you're like you know just like a rolling pin except it doesn't roll you know you're just rubbing and rubbing it and as you rub it you will see that it takes on that mirror finish so you've got all the scratches out with the sandpaper and with your exacto knife and now you're taking these things that have the mirror finish on them and you're rubbing it against this so you're basically refabricating your brooch Nothing wrong here. You're not doing anything bad to it. You're just putting the mirror shine back on it. Now this is a pretty long process and you just will, this is not a very hard, you're not pressing very hard, you're just light, very light pressure rubbing across this and it will just, I, it seems like magic. It's very satisfying to watch but it does take a while to do it and I'm going to speed this up like times 16 so it's going to go through really fast because um, it takes a long time to go through this and would be pretty boring to watch so let me speed it up for you guys and you can see Now right here is where I took a little bit too much time because I'm going to re-enamel this but I did take quite a bit of time um, shining each one of those feathers up so I'm just leaving it in since I did the work and you can see. Okay, tell me that's not amazing. Um, it still shocks me. I'm sitting here watching the video after I've done it and finished the whole project, and I still think that's amazing. Uh, yes, of course, the feathers down here, I have uh, retextured them some so the enamel will stick on it better, but look at this back. Look at this back. I mean, you can see my phone in that thing. Uh, it is a mirror finish, so it looks, to me, that's amazing. It looks great. I'm really excited about it, again. <laughs> All right, cold enameling. A few things before I start. Um, on the metal, I do take a little bit of sandpaper and rough up the metal where I'm going to paint so that the enamel will stick better. Also, I then take some of my acetone and I rub it over that metal to get any of the debris off so it's not sticking in the paint as I am enameling it. So cold enameling is essentially just painting something and not having to fire it afterwards. Uh, generally, enamel is a powder, like a crushed glass kind of powder, and then you have to fire it to have it stay and then you put a glaze over it and fire it again. It's a very long, complicated process and you see it a lot on like Scandinavian jewelry. A little pro tip here is that you don't want to be handling your jewelry while you're painting it with these uh, oil-based enamel paints or resin paints. So I just take a, a piece of foam board and cut it out and cut like a little spot for the pin to set in so I can just handle the foam board while I am 
painting instead of having to constantly handle the brooch or the piece of jewelry so I'm not touching it because it takes a while for these paints to dry and if you're touching them it's like kind of when your nail polish is tacky you know and you get like a big pool or you know a big spot in there and you have to redo the whole thing so that's what I'm doing with the foam board right here now the paint I use is an oil-based enamel paint and it's tester paints used uh, mainly for model cars but I mean you can use this stuff on anything and I use it a lot because it is oil-based enamel so that means when water hits it after it is completely dry it is not coming off this is very close to what they used back then, so I love that. I also have some more expensive enamel paints, and I actually do regular enameling, but you cannot do that with pot metal. You cannot fire pot metal at all. You will just instantly melt that stuff. But I use these tester paints a lot because they're more opaque, and a lot of the enameling painting that was done on these uh, vintage and antique brooches was very opaque and not translucent. So um, I also have some Martha Stewart ones that I use but they are much more translucent. So I sort of start with just like a really thin base coat and let it dry for just like a minute because it will become a little bit tacky and you know very quickly and then I flood it on there and by flooding it on there I mean I take uh, like a, a good a little amount on the little q-tip or brush that I'm using and I let it just fall on there and kind of flow so it doesn't have brush strokes and I'll just kind of push the paint to make sure it's flowing on there smoothly without any brush strokes because it's not like I have a uh, an air gun or anything so I can't just airbrush it on there same goes for the feathers I just take it and I will kind of just put a little bit thin coat on and then I will start flooding it and once again you flood it just by putting you know just kind of like a daub on there and then dragging it down because I'm not using a paintbrush it's a very just tiny thin um, q-tip I think it's used to like clean computers or something but you know I just got them off the internet like 300 of, 300 of them for a dollar <laughs> so anyway I'm just flooding it on there and if it gets on the side or something it's okay I can wipe it off uh, and it's not gonna be that big of a deal unless you know we're at the very end and I touch something else which <sighs> happens way too much but that is what that's how you get it on there without brush marks is by flooding it and if you've ever seen or watched people like do cookies and they like put it in there and they take a toothpick and kind of swirl it to make it all look beautiful and make some sort of Mona Lisa on a cookie that's what this is except for no Mona Lisa on a cookie here I am
finally get to the last step here, which is setting the rhinestones. And um, I unfortunately <laughs> forgot two things on the enameling that I did have to go back and do that you can see on the finished product. And it made it more difficult because I did have the rhinestones in, but that's okay, it still got done. But now I'm hand setting each one of these in there. And I do it with the Gorilla Glue, um, the gel Gorilla Glue that I've showed in many different videos. And I'll have a list of the things at the end of this video so you can see too. But I just individually set each one of them in there and they are new old stock. So they are just going to be perfect. You're blinded by the So here is the finished product, uh, or almost. I had to add some little white pinstripes and the red middle that you will see on um, the finished product at the very end, but it looks beautiful, uh, at least I think so, and, uh, and it's just ready for a new life. Thank you everybody so much for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions let me know and I appreciate everybody staying to the end. I know these videos are very long but they take a long long time to make and um, I really appreciate all your support. Have a great day. Thank you.